Here we go. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and uh, this is your virtual star party for May 19th, 2013. Uh, so this is our second try uh, using this technology, and we honestly have no idea if this is working. So uh, if you can see this, that would be great. If someone could like comment somewhere in the comments, that would be awesome. Yeah. We got a lot of yays on the YouTube. Oh, cool! Corey's saying it's cool. It's on Fraser and and on Gary, so we're good. All right, well, let's assume it's working. Um, Thank yeah, you, and so uh, we had a, and we've got a few more people who are going to join us tonight, and we lost them. So hopefully, we're going to get those people back any time now. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm going to introduce the people we've got right now. We've got uh, we've got Andrew Dumbleton in uh, the UK at like five. Hi, Fraser. <laughs> So again, I, I once again I am amazed and impressed and you know really thankful that you're willing to to get up at this really early uh, early time and and help us out. It's amazing. It's amazing because uh, the, the way the internet is this morning, <laughs> thousands of miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fact that this is even working. Um, uh, cool. We'll move on. We got Gary Ganella. Hi guys. San Angeles. We've got uh, Dr. Nicole Gallucci, and you're wearing your doctor's hat. I am wearing my funny doctor hat. I, so, uh, actually you've got to tell us the story. Today. What's 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 happening here? Uh, I'm in or just outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, so, although I officially started working with CosmoQuest last May and got my degree August 1st, uh, today was the the actual ceremony. So, I got my visor, gave me my hood. It's got all the official. Where is it? It's the uh, official pink astronomy colors of a doctorate of astronomy. So you know, all, all the all the pop and circumstance. <laughs> and, and so and so people didn't realize that that we had actually been calling on you for your astronomy knowledge before you were completely legit. And so well, I was legit as of August first. Right, but we had to throw out all of that previous yeah. information. Yes. And now we can accept your answers as like now. Now that I have the funny hat, now you have the funny, funny hat, hat makes me an actual professional. That's what the comes well. Out. Congratulations, that's amazing. Uh, we got Roy Salisbury. Hello, operating his remote telescope. We hope. We hope. As <laughs> it has been a technology uh, interesting night for technology, uh, and we got Scott Lewis. Hey, and Chris just pinged me. Yeah, he had a crash, so. Hopefully okay, it wasn't well, a telescope crash. Hopefully back, it was just so. a browser crash. So we've got three telescopes right now, and then Bill and Chris, Bill McLaughlin is testing out a brand new telescope, so we'll see if that works. And then um, and Chris has got a really nice view of the moon and Saturn, so it would be really great to have them back come back. But we've got three telescopes, so we will keep you busy with galaxies and star clusters and all kinds of things tonight. So, all right. so I'm going to move to Gary's view first. This um, is... NGC 6205, the Hercules Cluster. Now, people are going to have to help me out on this. Um, the Hangout has actually sort of crashed for me. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, I can't actually see the objects in the no, big screen. Sure. It's just, I'm just seeing an icon. So I'm hoping that it's... watch YouTube with it muted. Well, I guess it's a delay. So. Yeah, there is a bit of a delay, but hopefully yeah. as I click on Gary's... Uh, on Gary's image here, it actually shows it. So, but I'm going to try joining the Hangout a second time. Let's see if that works. Um, while we go, so Gary, so sorry, what was the object? Uh, NGC 6205, the Hercules Cluster, globular cluster. It, hasn't it got a more common name than that? Uh, I couldn't find one when I was looking for it. Lots and lots of stars in space. Is that M13. Is it 13? Messier 13. That's yeah. what I call the Hercules yeah. cluster. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there's another. Globular cluster in Hercules. That's right. Globular. The globular cluster in Hercules. Globular. globular. So that's M13. Globular. And as, 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 I, as I tell the high school students that come to my public nights, uh, you know, as they look at the f tiny fuzzy patch in my ETX 90, it's the oldest thing you will see with your eyes. So, pretty exciting. Yeah, it is the, uh, I mean, and we talked about this last week, actually, that that the clusters actually, um, or they used to think that these clusters were older than the universe, which obviously, you know, they didn't actually think right. that, but just the method of right. measuring the age of these clusters 
came up with a number that you know didn't conform with the method they used to figure out the age of the universe. And it turned out they had a, a bad method for figuring out the age of the universe. And now that's been but, really tightly confined, right? right? And whereas the, the aging of clusters still isn't that tightly confined. There's a pretty big error bar. So it's all good. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, this is a fantastic object. I mean, this is this is absolutely one of my favorite favorite objects. I mean, you can go with a pair of binoculars, um, you know, from now until you know end of summer, and pull this object out of the sky, and it's just fantastic. Um, and it's an e it's an easy object to find too, because once you learn where Hercules is, you can um, you can see the you know, it's on the, if you look up and, and you can see Hercules and there's like the chest of Hercules and then on the right hand side of his chest there's these two stars and then the halfway point pretty much in between those two stars even, even like if you don't even have, like if it's a nice dark sky and you even don't have binoculars you can see this faint little fuzzy blob at the halfway point between those, between those stars and that's, the, and that's this. And it looks of course way better when you do have uh, binoculars or a telescope. But even like a telescope, Gary's you know. Telescope. Yeah, I mean, a small telescope, it still looks fantastic. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to move on to Roy's view. And I really hope this is working. <laughs> Roy, what, is, uh, what are we looking at here? This is M64, the Black Eye Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got new hardware you're throwing at the sky tonight, right? Yes, this will be the first time I get to try my new 10-inch uh, RC out of my observatory, so uh, I can get in tiny little objects now. So normally this this here would have just been a little, I don't know, a dot on the screen. You could right. you could sort of make out the black guy on it, but now oh, you yeah. can really make it out. You can really make it out. That looks really nice. Fraser, I wish you could see this right now. It looks amazing. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could see what I could see, which is just nothing. So I, well, I can see recorded. it down in the you film strip. You can watch strip. it later tonight. And I can see it. I'll watch it later tonight. I can see it down in the film strip, so I can see this little thing, and I'm like, I can tell that's a galaxy. And actually, he had put it up before when we were testing yeah. new tests, and so I, so I was able to see the, the image before, so I knew it was the black guy galaxy. Yeah. But, but it's, you know... Um, I'm going to assume that I'm seeing, uh, uh, but it's got this really strange, like, you know, this weird structure in the middle of the galaxy. So what, uh, Nicole, what do you think happened here? So this looks like it's got a dust lane in it, and I don't remember off the top of my head what is happening, but you usually get such things after there's been an interaction with another galaxy, um, the fact that it's asymmetric like that. Um, but that dust lane is obscuring the visible light, but there's probably, I would bet, some major star formation happening in there. Um, well, they say and it, does, and it looks one, like it's... Hmm? The, Go ahead. The gas on the outside is rotating opposite of the stars on the inside. Oh, then that's got to be an interaction that, that, um, yeah. that it had with another galaxy. And it doesn't awesome. look like a merger. But it, it it must have had some kind of disturbance from another galaxy passing by. I mean, is it is it a situation? I mean, we've talked about like when the Milky Way and Andromeda collide, mm -hmm. you're going to get, you know, this giant elliptical galaxy. But is this the kind of situation where maybe, you know, it wasn't a really big impact? It was, you know, it it suffered a black eye, but it wasn't completely Exa exploded. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of it it, it may have been a passerby. Um, either that or it's, I'm actually trying to, trying to look this up, I think, um, yeah, I, I would say uh, if it's, it, this is being a spiral, so it's, it's probably not the, the merger of two galaxies like the Andromeda and Milky Way, because that's going to create an elliptical galaxy, but yeah, this, if it has a passerby, they interact and push each other and cause all this weird stuff to happen. So that would be, yeah, like you said, a black guy, but not completely destroyed. Yeah. Um, oh, and you've added more sources. Thanks, Scott. Um, okay, yeah. cool. I'm going to move to and in Andrew. fact, it, what, what, oh. Andrew, what are we looking at? Hi, Fraser. Well, we've got um, one of a family of what we call carbon stars. Um, so they're... Um, Highly evolved red giant stars. They're highly evolved. Their, yeah. Highly evolved. <laughs> and their 
atmospheres are rich in carbon which blocks some of the blue light so uh, in binoculars or telescopes they appear very red or orange this one's supposed to be poetically described as poppy red <laughs> now were, were they possibly on some of the poppy at the time because i'm thinking yellow <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I slightly overexposed this one, so it looks a little more orange than red, but uh, I'm, I'm told in binoculars this is uh, has the nickname of La Superba and was featured on Universe Today this week. Those guys. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard good things about that. that <laughs> I don't trust them. <laughs> but uh, no, it's got a great, it's got a great color. It kind of looks like, um, like Alberio a little, but that's a nice double star, so... One of the Alberio, one of the, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that looks great. Now, I'm looking... so great because it's got next to each other. That are yeah, right. yeah, so it's got that beautiful orange color and then another one, which is great. And are you, Andrew, are you using the telescopes over an eye telescope? Or... Yes, I am. I'm uh, using one from New Mexico known as T3, which is a, a one-shot color camera, so I hope to bring some color, at least, to some objects today. Oh, look, I appreciate the color. You can even see just from the, the background stars are really nice. I wish Fraser could see these, too. I know how much he loves color images coming into the Hangout. I saw it before. <laughs> okay. Now, now, I'm not able to see Bill. I'm only seeing an icon from Bill. So let me just. Bill's I'm coming through. A cluster. <laughs> I'm seeing M5 from Bill. Yeah, M5. Right. Are we working? Or me? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We have a binary freezer. Okay, hold on. Uh -huh. Try this. That's so not how exchange rates on, work. On the black eye, clarification: black eye galaxy. I hope we're still live. Um, is that it actually uh, did, it probably uh, accreted a, a smaller satellite galaxy onto it, and so that's what caused the uh, stars going in the opposite direction in the dust lane as well. So it, it ate one of its itty-bitty satellite galaxies, which is something the Milky Way does all the time. Fraser, are, are you okay? Still? Fixed. I'm all right now. Are you fixed? Okay. Yeah, it's I good. It's all working. And I'm going to okay. keep my second me along just just to be safe. Justing. With that, yeah. that dapper icon yeah. at the bottom, loving yeah. it. The other, the other me right here staring at ourselves. Yes. Um, all right. Well, What's now, new now I'm Is that your new pixel by any fully chance? operational. What's that? Is that your new pixel by That's any chance? Pixel, You're yes. showing up bragging to the world about at, being at I.O.? I was at I.O. I was at uh, I.O. this week, and, uh, yeah, they gave pixels out to everybody. Thanks, Google. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to Bill's view now. Yes, M5. And I can see it. I can totally see it. So this is great. Now, now the show can go on. So, Bill, what is it? That's M5. Uh, I actually threw a red filter to cut down on some of the light pollution. Mm. I'm That's not really seeing the... Now, uh, you've, got a new, you've got a new setup this week too, right? Uh, yeah, I've got, uh, I can switch to that uh, after you've got done talking about M5 uh, and uh, show people what it looks like. The, oh, the actual telescope? Yeah, yeah, I'll just turn the light on in the observatory. Oh, yeah, let's see it. That'd be awesome. Okay, I will turn it on and I will switch to that screen. That's not a telescope. That's a human. That's a human. Okay, go to my observatory camera. There we go. It's actually three telescopes. Oh. Wow. Three telescopes all just glued together on that big mount. What mount is it? So what does each one do? It's a paramount. Um, actually, there's four if you want to count the camera sitting on top. Yeah. Um, but there's this, the, the old one I used to have, uh, which is, if I can get this thing centered up a little bit here. There, if you look on the left, the, the FSQ over here that mm -hmm. I used to have, this is a TOA 130, also Takahashi, and then this is a Stellar View Raptor 105. And on the back, um, there are uh, three different Desbig cameras. But we're still kind of you know, working the the bugs out here. So, 
That's yeah. I can see how there might be bugs with a setup like that. Yeah, it's it's well, it's kind of like you're like a one-armed paper hanger when you're trying to operate, you know, more <laughs> than one. The the ultimate idea is uh, to get some software written that will coordinate the three, and uh, you know, I've got to get them working properly first, and then once I get to that point, I can start dealing with the software to get them to talk to each other. I think you might be able to shoot down small aircraft with that. <laughs> but I mean, you've really saved money on mount costs. It does, and you know, it's it's. Um, I can switch real quick, like here, to something that'll show it a little bit better. There might be room on the other side for a couple more telescopes. I think. Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a fourth one. It's a it's a ten inch. Uh, excuse me, a little eight inch inexpensive Ritchie that I can substitute for the. Um... And we lost him. Oh. How fun! Oh, we'll never find out. There's so much mass on that mount that it created a singularity and sucked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm going to move to Gary's view. And you, Gary and Roy, actually, you guys picked the same object. Did you know that you were going to yeah. do this? Same uh, no. And it, It's different. Um, I love the views that Roy's getting tonight. I've got real, I don't have real good viewing, but uh, this is the Sombrero Galaxy. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great. You can still really make out that that really interesting look and to it. His... And then, I got my version of the black guy coming up next too. Well, and here's so here's Roy's version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, his is a little crisper tonight. Yep. That's great. I mean, the Sombrero <laughs> Galaxy. When you see those images from from Hubble, it's just a, an yeah. amazing looking galaxy. Now, now, does it have such a neat view just because we're seeing the Sombrero from? From this perspective, or or is it like going through some active star formation as well? Is there something going on in that galaxy? Sorry, I was answered to comment on the <laughs> on the page. Sterling um, uh, notes, Sterling uh, Gothrop notes that where's Doctor Zabo? This hangout has a beard deficiency, but I I brought the Zabo beard. Yes. He so beard. He is that beard. your playoff beard? Yeah, uh, no, 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 I just What's thought it was time ball? to grow a beard. But no, Sombrero isn't necessarily interacting. It's just because you're seeing it edge on. Every uh, gal you know, every galactic spiral has dust in its midplane, dust and gas. Uh, that that's one of the features of a of a spiral or a disk galaxy. And at this angle, you can see that quite clearly because the nucleus is shining through it. So not not necessarily interacting in the same way that the Black Eye Galaxy was. That one was asymmetric, and that was kind of the key for that one. And so that's really your your clue that some kind of galactic interaction is happening is you're seeing that asymmetric you're seeing structure. Something asymmetric, yeah, yeah, that's a little odd. It's a little it's hard for a galaxy to do that on its own. Yeah. Uh, so Death Guitarist Twelve is saying, is it just me or are the active views behaving differently this week? Seems that every time someone makes a sound, it auto switches view instead of leaving it on. Hmm. Uh oh. Yeah, I wonder. No, is is it because Razor, you're yeah, because I'm doubled. Yeah. yeah, so let's see if that if that fixes it. Right. Yeah. Thanks, the Death Guitarist Twelve. Yeah. Thank so you. Death Guitarist Twelve, could you let me know if that fixed the problem? Because it was it wasn't sure which of my views was controlling the uh, the hangout. So. Um. Oh, Bill's got it back with. His... That is. That's a very tricky build you've done there. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little tricky. Uh, the idea was to get the three together. Um, looked at from the back, it's got a double plate with the electronics in between. The double plate also gives not only gives you a place for the electronics, but it also in, lends a lot of stiffness to it, which you need for to keep the differential flexure under control. Is there a laser on it? Please tell me there's a laser. We could add that. I, my my wife's got one on her dub. Yeah, <laughs> room for a laser. That's, that's called cheating. I, I use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Stick a green laser on the telescope. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I love so that. So anyway, well, but you've got the same. You got three of the same of the same camera. Uh, two of them. Are, well, they're the, the one on the right was a. It's, I've switched off the picture now, but uh, the one on the right was a color camera. The one the one in the middle is a self guiding STT. TS big camera, and the one on the left is uh, the same camera, but without the self-guiding aspect of it. I've gone to Roy's uh, to Roy's picture now, and uh, he's only got. Twelve says it got fixed, so it Anyone did else fix. Is still 
Yeah, but if anyone, I've seen a couple of the comments. So if anyone else is still seeing it, flip to the audio. Yeah, I'll bet you that was that's what was happening. Yeah, let us know. But it sounds like it's fixed. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. Yeah. Let me know if that fixed it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, I tried to fix one. Th I did fix my being able to even see what people are showing, so that helped. Um, so and Roy, so what's your setup then? Um, that is a three. I've only got three cameras online, so there's three scopes on there. There's the 106 millimeter or the four inch refractor, the white one that you can barely see there. Yeah. There's a the blue one sitting on top of that, which is a 66 millimeter refractor. Um, and then the big uh, ten inch next to it. And that's the it's the ten inch that you were you're showing off tonight, right? I'm, right, that's what I'm using tonight. And first light. I mean, I don't think people realize this is your first night of of even getting any images from this telescope at all, and you decided correct doing it live in the middle of the hangout. Do it live. Uh, yep, I've, I've noticed a few things that I need to work on. Some of my collimation's still off. It uh, doesn't hold focus very long, even though it's a carbon fiber tube, the, the temperatures are really wreaking havoc on it. Hmm. Trial by fire, Roy, thank you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, are you, are you kidding? I mean, your first yeah. images were fantastic. So. Absolutely. Oh, I'm, I've saved the best one for uh, for last here. Okay, well, I'm going to move over to Andrew's view first, because it's amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, how pretty. <laughs> Hit us with the science, M82, Nicole. M eighty two. M eighty two is another galaxy in in um, oh, in, in, in interaction. So M eighty one and M eighty two are uh, close by each other, and you can't always see in the optical images and see that they're interacting. Um, but uh, you can see in radio images that the the gas is all <laughs> squished together, um, and so that's why you've got some some funky shape here. Is that uh, it's it's um, being being gravitationally disturbed by M81, its larger neighbor. neighbor. That's beautiful. That's I mean, you can Very really see the too. sort of the dark dust lanes in the middle, and uh -huh. yeah, no, that's a really terrific image, that's Andrew. Gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Yeah, and I don't know whether you can. Too. I mean, you can see. Yes, I was just going to remark. Could you see the uh, the pink yeah. color in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's just terrific. Um, and, and when we're done here tonight, Andrew, can you put these up into the event page as well, just so people can see the full resolution that's coming through? Yeah, sure can. That'd yeah, because be I mean, people don't realize. I mean, we're only seeing, we're only broadcasting, yeah. we're only seeing 480p in our Hangout, and an right. even smaller version that is being broadcast out. So, yeah, so, the actual yeah. image yeah. quality is a lot higher. So, I would love to see that. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean. You can just see that the star formation in this galaxy is just overwhelming. This is our closest example of a starburst galaxy. And so its interactions have been causing the gas to collapse and form big bright stars and splish gas all over the galaxy, all, all over the interstellar space, or intergalactic space. Um, so we got a we're request. Just a little bit of that. Got a request for NGC 4567, which is the uh, butterfly galaxy. So I don't think we've ever seen that. So if someone would be able to to get that, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that I'm, was from Terry I'm Rhodes. All for a new thing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Can anyone try and pull that one up? I know we're all four of you are going to try now. Move to it right now. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to your next view, Roy. Oh, wow. Ready? Go, everyone. Let's do this. What's that, Roy? That is NGC forty five sixty five. That's not the sombrero again. No, I didn't have the sombrero before. Oh. So this is the ten inch. Oh yeah, this I take that back. This is I had the sombrero before. This is another edge on. This is another edge on. Okay. This is okay. crazy. Yes. It did look right. the sombrero. I mean, except for it's a little, it's a little warped. Um, you can see. Yeah, but you can and you can see again that nice dust lane going there. Wow. Yes. Are you yes. just using yes. luminance, Roy? Just luminance, yeah. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's what right. a dark. That's beautiful pictures. That's just that's sick. It's also known as the, the Needle Galaxy or Caldwell 38. It's around 30 to 50 million light years away. That's so but it's crazy. so big in the... <laughs> now, did you zoom in on it? No. When you put it up, or is that just your field of view? That's the field of view. Wow. Okay. Wow. How, so how big is your field of view, then? Um, good question. 
I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> um, I find out really quick, though. Any chance of getting Saturn with this setup? Um, it would still be too small. This is uh, 30 by 23 arc minutes. So, like, half a degree? So it would be, like, moon-sized, kind of? That's yeah. what I'm after. Yeah, the moon, the, the moon won't fit in this field of view. It's too too big. Right, but Saturn yeah. will still be <laughs> Yeah, Saturn would still be too small. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, the next time you buy a scope, Roy... Um, <laughs> there's room on that mount for another <laughs> planet. No, Bill can do it. You can do it. Actually, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> It gets That's a little uh, heavy after a while. Yeah. <laughs> Mine carries 150 pounds. I'm up to 135, so I don't think I have much room. This, this yeah. one will hold 90 pounds, and I'm probably right about 85. Now, you know, Scott, you got some images from... We sort of announced we're going to do a sort of yeah. quick uh, contest and get a bunch of people to submit their images, and we were going to uh, sort of pick some winners or let people vote on some winners. And Let me just screen share yeah. the submissions right now. Just phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal imaging coming through. So I'm going to be going through these uh, all week. Just going through. Um, some of you have already received some emails from me, so I can get uh, the full resolution of the images coming through. Some of them have been cropped down, but just fantastic imaging of the eclipse, planetary of deep sky objects, of the moon, of the sun, of the International Space Station. I mean, wow. just some great, great yeah. images coming in from our photo contest. So thank you, everyone, for this. Wow. Um, like I said, I'm going to be going through and taking some time to categorize all these, uh, and then we'll start using these. And especially the winners will start using them for the banners for the Virtual yeah. Star Party, the icons, and a lot of the graphics going on there. And I'm actually going to try to make a set of maybe 10 to 15 for um, desktop backdrops for the virtual star party. Look at all the M51s there. I yeah. know. It's I see four target. of them here. Oh, my goodness. So you, everyone that... I just realized that I have an submissions. old interest for M51, I should have said. So how many astronomers gave us images? That is a great question. I'm Let's seeing, see. like, you know, how many, well, how many numbers are there there? By photographer. Let's see. Well, I can say one that did not, and that would be me. What? <laughs> I did not submit one, an image. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, three, two, four, twenty-five. Twenty-five, so 25 submissions. Nice. Yeah, and we'll yeah. and we'll we'll run something in in universe today and sort of highlight everyone's work because it's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have my work cut out for me. It's oh, yeah, totally. It's just some and, phenomenal, some and, phenomenal work. Boy, this is crazy. Look at these images coming from this new setup. And you're going so fast, too. Holy. Wow. That is M63. Wow. Wow. You know what that is? It's, it, the arms are a little bit... Okay. Are they a little flocculent? Just a little bit. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is no, a gorgeous image. That is a gorgeous image. Yeah. Because, oh my god, I mean you just look at it's it's a so low surface brightness and yet you're picking up the detail. Yeah. Like, yeah, wow. I think you made a good investment, Roy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. What are you I, I, like I, said, I still got some work to do on it, but it's uh it's a good start. Yes. That is amazing. James Haney says, Frail, what an incredible span of contributions. That is an excellent word choice. Yeah. <laughs> Where does that come from, Frail? Farscape. Oh, that's right? a good show. I think that's Farscape, yeah. Yeah, Farscape. Um, Emilio Rivera says, Could somebody get the Sagittarius star cloud when it gets above the horizon? When will we see Sagittarius? Soon. Go to Chile. <laughs> well, we can still see we can still see no, Sagittarius. Yeah. We can see Sagittarius from my house in the summer. <clears throat> yes, no. So in the summer. This this yeah. high above the horizon. Yeah, yeah. It depends. I mean, I I'm so burned by having sky glow close to the horizon. I'm like, 
I've switched to Andrew's view now. I think. Are you still on the on the black eye, Gary? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm bringing another one up. Okay. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> What are we looking at, Andrew? Not yeah, I don't know whether you can see it. This was quite faint. Um, so it's supposed to be NGC 2403, uh, which is a galaxy, small galaxy, 10 million light, light years away. Um, but it came out a bit fainter um, than expected. So I don't know whether you guys can actually see that. As I can see the small <laughs> central core and some yeah. some yeah, arms. I I can, I can see, you know, a little around the balls and maybe a little on the arms. Yeah. Oh, there. Now it comes in. It was pixelated for me. Yeah. No, no, it looks great. Now I see it. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's definitely a little faint, though. I mean, it's almost like it's a little noisy in the... In we the... Are, and we already have a little noisy in the background, <laughs> Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah, I'll try and uh, spin something else up pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but still, Ed... Especially when this is coming into focus, it looks really nice. Yeah. yeah. It's quite yeah. faint, though. Even, you know, sounds of noise. I'm wondering if there's just something in the in the area that might be drowning it out. Yeah, like the moon. <laughs> moon? Oh, okay. That would do moon. it. Moon? That would do it. All right, I'm going to move on. Yeah, I'll bet you it's the moon. Stupid moon. Uh, Bill's view. Yeah, this is the request. Oh yeah, uh, nice. the one, the the two that are colliding. Uh, I, I, they are either a colliding, colliding, or apparently colliding. Uh, are 4567, the one on the middle, kind of top. Uh, that would be yep. this this one here, uh, and then 4568 below it, and then the one up here is 4564. Yeah. Okay, so the butterfly ga galaxies or the Siamese twin galaxies. Right, are the two that are uh, colliding. Those are awesome. And a satellite. Yeah, and they are definitely in the process of colliding or merging. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Although the fact that they're not that disturbed means that there's probably still some distance and we're not seeing. Um, but they are in their dance. They're in their da gravitational dance where the stars are going to start to come together and yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a little star dance and they're going to probably come together and form an elliptical. Now, you know, what's amazing is that the stars never collide. The right. distances between the stars are so huge. Um, so but the gas is going to collide and cause it. But great suggestion. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. I've never seen that before. That's a first. Another first oh, VSP. VSP. Another first in the VSP. All right, I'm moving to Gary's view. Oh, that's nice. What are we at? What's Yay. this, Gary? Sorry, I was making a little noise here, and I had myself muted. Uh, M101. Oh, yeah. <laughs> full-on flocculent. It's flocculent. <laughs> <laughs> but the moon is. That just means the arms aren't the arms aren't as well ordered as you would get in a grand design spiral. Um, it, I, it's still contentious how spiral arms actually form. <clears throat> Obviously, interactions will, will make them form, um, uh, but also just gravity waves within the, the the galaxy itself will cause these these flocculent spiral arms. So Stuart Lancaster asks: Are the galaxy images what the telescope is seeing now, or are they a stacked photograph from a few minutes ago? So. The when we do the planets and Chris unfortunately it was having some technical technical problems. So when we do the moon, the planets, and the sun, that's all live. So we do this live video. We just stream the view through the telescope. When we do the deep space objects like the clusters and the galaxies and the nebulae, then we'll do a a longer exposure and then just put the image up and then just refresh it. So so in this case, Gary, what's the exposure on this? That's a two minute and two minute it's exposure being four so. by four, so there's no stacking right. involved. And so Gary, you know, pointed his telescope at this spot in the sky, gathered light for two minutes, and then this is the image. And his telescope is now gathering light for the next thing that he's taking. It's as of. close to live as you can get for, for these objects. Right. You know, this is what you're doing when you're sitting at, at, at a large observatory doing research is you, you do the same thing. You integrate for as long as you need to and up comes your image. And then you spend your time processing. Catch those photons. And so we don't, yeah, we don't really have time for processing. So, mm -hmm. so we just get the raw images in most cases. Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I just extreme astronomy. I just stretch the light and dark ends and put it up. Yeah, and you, I mean, you could, I mean, Stuart is, is an absolute master of this, of just being able to pull more and more data. He showed me how he does his, um, like, some of his work with Photoshop, and it's just beautiful. Like, he shows me this image, and you can just barely see a galaxy in there, and then he just goes and, like, stretches it, and then balances it and stretches it, and I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's getting, like, this perfect part of the, of the distribution of the light curve, and then it just... Right. Boom! The galaxy just pops right out, and because he's amazing. the doctor, because he's a doctor, yeah, he's the doctor, <clears throat> it's, it's yeah, the medical doctor, kind of really he's not fine a fake doctor like me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. A like a real, like a real doctor, like oh. a real doctor, he's like a real oh. doctor, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can do surgery now, Nicole. Good. All right. Yeah. Um. No. <laughs> I can do surgery on radio telescopes. That's about the extent of it. <laughs> yeah. Right, Sorry. Um. I, I said gravity radio. waves earlier, and it's not the same type of gravity wave. Waves, uh, responding to a comment by chat, or not the kind of gravity waves that they're looking for um, from like pulsars colliding, um, but actually just the gravitational interactions of stars within them. So, um, it's kind of like uh, if you have going down a highway and there's that one slow truck in the right lane, you know, and everyone's trying to pass it, so everyone just kind of goes slower. It's a wave in that sense. So sorry for the misspeak. Yeah. So. I've I've moved to Roy's view, and <clears throat> again, it's it's really good. <laughs> yeah, and this one is really out of focus. I can see I can see the stars yeah. are getting a little uh, a little out of focus. Yeah, can yeah, you fix I that didn't... next time, Roy? Please. I yeah, mean, yeah, I... yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of gives it this dreamy look. It does. I, yeah. It's very soft in a in a good way. Wow. But it's still great. I mean, a little out of focus, but still really nice. Yeah, and another interacting galaxy pair. And that's M fifty one. Most fun, most fun things in the universe. And that's what we were talking about Almost. in the uh, in the images for the um, for the contest. There was like four images of M fifty one all in right. the same spot. And rightly so, it's a great image to it's a great object to to go an image. So this means also, Roy, next time there's no excuse. Uh, when, yeah. I, when we have our next contest, don't no excuse me. Don't put anything in. <laughs> but this is this is what I meant by an interaction causing more distinct spiral arms. This is an example of what we'd call a grand dozen spiral. And so the interaction with that smaller galaxy has um, caused the stars to form into a pattern, uh, such that these spiral arms are so intense. Yeah. And that's why we love to take pictures of it. And so there's massive star formation going on in that place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's also burning up all its excess fuel in star formation, right? Right, right. Um, well, I mean, there's still going to be plenty left. It's it's only when you get a major merger of spirals that the gas, it, you know, if you have enough supernova blowing the gas out of the galaxy, then it's going to shut down. But this looks it's like it's still got plenty of gas for, for another round. Yeah. Roy's 51 has just blown mine away. <laughs> Well, it's yours. No, no. I'm I, jealous, I want to go Roy. back and refocus it. Aww. I'm jealous. Well, he, you got, your focus is a little tighter, Gary. Yes, it yeah, is. I'm yes, going to have to go back is. and refocus now. A little bit. Oh, my gosh. We have a... <laughs> you're battling. <laughs> and you're a little bit more selective with the wavelengths, Gary. I, I like that you're yes. very picky when it comes to that. It, and, and, it's true. In my defense, I'm sitting here being jealous of Roy. I do live in a light period area, and this yes. is the wrong time of year for my telescope. Mm -hmm. And the moon is high in the sky. Yeah, you're. Yeah. You got a lot working against you. There's that. The Nazis were trying to invade, and you know all yeah. this happening. Yeah, the alien. And, and he's slowing <laughs> uphill both ways. Both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> So this, yeah. so Gary, are you using are you using the H alpha filter? Excuse me. Are you using the H alpha filter? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a 12 nanometer okay, H alpha. Okay, okay. So that's why, yeah. So that is particularly pulling out those bright knots of star formation, um, and so that's that's definitely the different view that you're seeing. Um, yeah, I'm per, I'm great for big nebula. Yeah. <laughs> Things that give off that particular red line, and that's, but that's we're why in, it, yeah. We're in, in galaxy season now, so. I know, I love it. <laughs> well, we should be getting the Eagle Nebula pretty soon, right? Uh, about four weeks. Yeah. Four we'll weeks. be starting to pull it out. 
That'll be Aaron great. Here People. first, folks. Four weeks, and you can just nag us all summer long. All summer long. <laughs> when do we see? When can we see the pillars of creation? Soon. Oh, Andrew hasn't updated. Unless this is yeah, this is the same image. I'm all out of images. Somebody help me out here. I've got one coming. I'm going to M81 now, but it's going to take about three minutes. Okay. Three minutes. Collecting the photo. But I want to see it now. <laughs> I love you, Fraser. No. So somebody impatient. has to. <laughs> well, I can show you my butterfly nebula, but that didn't turn out very good. Um, show us your butterfly, Roy. Show us your butterfly. Bill, what have you got, Bill? Okay, uh, well, it's uh, not uh, processed particularly well. I think I'm also slipping out of focus, but uh, it's M63. And look at the little galaxy off to the left there. I love yeah, this. There's a little one. I, I'll, let me take a look at the. Uh, that would be. I think you know the forty-five sixty-seven is pretty close to the to the moon tonight, which is why I think yeah. it's, we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of washed out in in Roy's view. <laughs> I'm looking at the sky here uh, program, and there's so many little tiny galaxies in there. I can't tell which one is which here. Um, I, can, I just started going to the spots and said, oh, let's try that one. <laughs> um, uh, BTL743 says, can we have a Messier marathon? Um, I would love to do a Messier marathon. Um, and, in fact, my goal is for us to do a Messier marathon in, like, an hour. And just, like, you know, just... Which would be intense. Wouldn't that be crazy? Yes. It would be intense. We need to do but like, we would like need only the only thing possible Venus. is if we had somebody in England, right. Andrew, and somebody... Um, That's using the, a telescope in England, Andrew. Yeah, and actually using <laughs> a telescope in England and not, and not connecting Imagine. through the internet back to the United States, um, but actually being in England or even, you know, a little further. And then we could, you know, in, was it in March, I think, be able to get all of the objects, and so we could try and do it simultaneously. So, But I can also just pull up Stellarium and bore you guys for an hour and just search them one by one. In oh, and order. I think that little <laughs> galaxy off to the side is PGC45992 for whatever it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so so I would love, I would love, love, love to do a, a Messier Marathon, and maybe we'll take a crack at doing sort of the best we can do some night. But, you know, we're only going to get about 30 or 40 objects, I think, in any one night. And then we run out of steam in time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not time. Like you did with the, with the transit of Venus where it was like four or five hours, big long one. Oh. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to do a long one. I would rather do a simultaneous one. Like we take advantage of the, of the, the fact that we can have astronomers in different locations, right? Right. And so just have you know some people on the west coast, some people on the east coast, and some people maybe in England, and then just run them all at the same time. Yeah, we, I really love doing the transit of Venus, but being out, I guess maybe it's because I was in the desert in June <laughs> you were a for little six and a half hours straight trying to observe the sun. I was a little exhausted when we yeah. were done with that. So. Um, uh, Wayne W. says, hi guys, due to the jumping from image to image and person to person, could we announce the image and telescope camera used, please? Um, so I think, you know, what we might want to do is have people use their lower thirds and then keep uh, it on themselves, way? like keep their lower third for themselves, but then make the second line of it, yeah. be, you know, put your telescope in there so people can know what the telescope is and then the actual object. I, you don't think you can do that when you're screen sharing, though. You're, yeah, you can't do it when you're screen sharing. Oh, right, of course, of course. The lower third disappears on the screen chair. Right, so, so yeah, so we would have to kind of announce each each time. So we announce all the telescopes and the, and the people in the beginning, and then mm -hmm. the problem is that as people display their images, we they go away. So, yeah, I know it's kind of confusing, and we just don't really have very good tools to be able to do that kind of a thing. And, and something I'm thinking about doing for the future, too, is just trying to get the specs from all of our astronomers to have it up in the virtual star party page. So if someone's confused about what each astronomer has, where yeah. they're at, we'll have some sort of general idea. We're not giving you addresses or phone numbers. Sorry. Yeah, but I, I mean, I would love to do, like, you know, in the beginning, do a quick setup where we go, yeah. you know, have a nice picture of the person set up and the person beside their telescope and have some stats, almost like it's, you know, 
we're about to have a UFC fight, and then the octagon you know, on Google Plus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so definitely, that would all be great. And you know, at some point when we have some time and resources, and we'll get on that. So yeah. anyway. Okay, but as long as we we mention what the object is. Uh, which we do, but we may skim over the name as we all go, ooh, ah, it's yeah. doing this. So, yeah, I think that, yeah, that exactly. might be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. We need to be more conscious of, so thank you. <laughs> uh, so so I have switched to Roy Salisbury's view, which is with this wonderful 10-inch uh, telescope, and he is also doing the Butterfly Galaxies. Oh, okay. Yes, but it's way too close to the moon. Yeah, you can really see that the moon is washing it out. That's great. So, yeah. And then I'm going to move over to Andrew's view, and Andrew's got this crazy all-sky. There's the moon. <laughs> it is. <laughs> As we were talking about it, I just thought I'd show it. There's that, like a little comet-looking thing there, but that's just a lens flare. <laughs> oh, we're, we're in Good Star job. Trek now, Good everyone. job, J.J. Abrams. We're in, we're in Star Trek. Yeah. There was an awful lot of <laughs> lens flaring in that. And, oh, and, and Bill's got his photon torpedoes in this, yep. in this four ready to shoot out. Spoiler, if you watch the new Star Trek movie, there's a lot of lens flares. That's not a spoiler. <laughs> um. <laughs> and space is big. We, we just put that all out. Uh, Helen Reed is asking for the backwards five asterism in Hercules. Does anybody have the field of view? I'm not sure how big it is. I've got... Mm -hmm. She's provided the... It's uh, RA-16H-36 RA degrees. That's right ascension, 16 hours, yeah. 36. Declination, 30 yeah. degrees, 45. She couldn't have handed it to us on more of a platter here. Uh, she could have taken a, a photo of it herself. Are they 1950? How's the coordinates? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dorky. Um, I'm going to move to Gary Ganella's view from Los Angeles using his 14-inch uh, Celestron. This is the star um, setup. Owl Nebula with the Pussycat Galaxy. Really yes. make that work. Because wow. Thad's not here, but other? with us in spirit. Yeah. Yes, Thad is with us. Well, here's the, the Owl Nebula and uh, its companion Pussycat. <laughs> And just Sorry. since we were talking about scopes, I will do this real quick, if I can find it. Come on, move. I'm glad that you're safe and have a fire extinguisher behind you, Gary. I appreciate that. <laughs> He's got the most awesome man yes. cave back. It's sort yes. of like a shed in the outside of his house, and it's it's awesome. Yes, yeah. it is. And there, then that's a separate a... Uh, telescope setup, yeah. Oh, that's right. You've been there, Fraser. Yeah, I've been to the yeah. house. I've been. Fraser, to, we're here. I've been to the Ganer, uh, yeah, to the Gary Ganella Observatory. Yeah, yeah. So that's the scope pointing presently at M81 and M82 nice. that I'm downloading right now, and I'll have up. All right, I'm going to move to Roy Salisbury's view. Oh wow, Roy. I don't know. What? It's a little out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Look at the look, freaking! Oh my god! That is amazing. Which galaxy is this? I, I... that would be M eighty one. M eighty one. Wow, that's that's awesome, that's right. the big galaxy tugging on M eighty two. Yeah. Oh, so I don't creative. think I like you anymore, Roy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll bet he's got room in his uh his shed. <laughs> His remote shed. You can drop another telescope in there. I have another pier in the observatory that's not being used. Yeah, we, but the good thing is happen. if mine's broken, I can fix it. And that's true. Yeah, that's, that's just it. You don't have to <laughs> yeah, drive but, all the way up. But, but now, if it gets broken, just just get Roy to fix it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that works, huh? There you go. He's only, he's only three, it's only three hours more west of you, or east of you. Like a six-hour drive to make sure your yeah, telescope's you, okay. If you drove Three hours west, scary. <laughs> that would be sad. That would be tough. Yeah. <laughs> the Pacific Ocean Observatory. Well, I'd, I'll give you a remote observatory here at my place, but all you would get is rain. Nice dark skies, but that's because there's just clouds, and there's rain. clouds. But you can do radio astronomy. Yeah, yeah. That's why the Dutch are so good at it. Uh, Michael Jobin wonders if you're going to build a phase array panel antenna in your backyard. So I have 
on the order of how many, Tim, how many satellite dishes do we have in our garage? You have four. <laughs> four? Four, four satellite dishes in, in my garage. garage. Five. <laughs> you just like hit, five. Like, hit up garage sales and like, uh, yeah, Craigslist. I'll take that Craigslist. satellite. I've been, I've been picking up satellite dishes with the idea of building a few itty bitty radio telescopes. Uh, they're great little demonstrators for, you can look at the sun, basically. Oh, and what, <laughs> what have I named it when you set it up? And, and yes, Scott has decided that when I make it an interferometer, it's going to be called the Redneck Array. Yes. So, <laughs> Redneck Array. This is my plan. That's awesome. It's, it's too bad you're not closer. I have an old big dish sitting in the backyard that's not being used. Yeah. I'm sure we could. Ooh, I would like to make a small radio telescope at some point. I know uh, MIT Haystack has the designs for that, but I need a few thousand more bucks if I'm going to put that together. So I've switched to Gary's view, and let's oogle it for a bit. M81 and M82. Roy was giving us M81. Yeah, and that just shows how wide Gary's field of view is. He's able to get both of them in that same... Yeah. <clears throat> also, Gary can see again now that it's brighter in the center of M82 because it, he's picking up that H alpha again from the the, the star formation and uh, uh, all that. I mean, like actually, if you saw it in color, there'd be this pink gas coming out in the middle of that galaxy. Roy, did you switch to the moon? Yes, I did. So, could you like just try and and uh, maybe do Saturn after this? Like, I know it's gonna. I I can try. Well. This was one twentieth of a second on hydrogen alpha. <gasps> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> that means a tiny bit of the spectrum, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was so bright. Yeah. So Saturn won't be that bright. It's just going to be teeny tiny. I, I know I that. Try. I'm ready for that. I'm ready to deal with that emotionally. The moon is so pretty. But we've, seriously, oh, we have not man. gotten Saturn, you know, really this season yet. Well, we had it in the pre-hangout that wouldn't launch. Yeah, and then Chris, Chris's computer crashed, and then we lost it. And so we had the moon and Saturn, and we didn't. Phil, Roy, that's a great image. Amazing. I... Let's see if what happens if I zoom in. Oh, Russell, I wish I could pick up your 39-inch dish. <laughs> I'll just drive over Oh, oh now you can see the focus is a little off. Yeah. Everyone's a critic. It wasn't, it wasn't set for the hey, moon. Your collimation is bad, and you should feel bad, Roy. Uh, I do. 743 notes, I love the irony and phrases location, just moved to, like, Labrador. Um, I'm on the other coast. I'm on the <laughs> west coast. That's the east coast. It's all Canada. <laughs> It's all rain, Canada. <laughs> no, no. Here That's we just Jesus, have the Jesus rain. <laughs> That's a terrific, terrific photo. Wow. That's great. Okay, I'm going to move to Andrew's view. Oh, it's an owl. It's a noisy owl. <laughs> a noisy owl. You, you yeah. can put that in the image there. Yeah, the noisy owl. <laughs> yeah. I'm just taking a longer exposure of it just to see if it works out better. But I've, I have a feeling it's the, it's the moon washing it out, but uh, we'll see. So what method are you using to share your image then? Because you've, you've got your lower third up, so you're not using the lower third to image share it, and you're not using your... Uh, men, I know ManyCam will do it, but I don't see the ManyCam logo. No, it, it's similar to ManyCam. It's called Webcam Max. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So you're using Webcam Max, and then you're, you're over top of that. All right. right yeah, so we've abandoned that method of thing. sharing. You don't need to do that. You can just you can screen share, and that and that's probably a lot more stable, and higher resolution actually. You might want to try yeah. that for next time. Don't use Webcam Max; just use um, I mean, screen share. Yeah, it's it's actually looks like that on my screen as well. So it's uh, it's pretty high resolution. Um, so if I show the scope I'm using, no. Well, this is coming through pretty pixelated. No, no. Is it so. Yeah, so I yeah, would not use this pretty... method next time. Yeah. Even the rendering cool. of the font is kind of fuzzy. Yeah, so just use the... Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so just screen, so just screen share. Yeah, just screen share. We can do that. Yeah, that'd be great. But, I mean, right now you, it'll, it'll probably break your system to try and do that. So, All right, well, so we're closing in on an hour, and I know yeah. people, you know, people get tired of this space thing after an hour, so... 
It is 1.30 in the morning. Start to wrap it. I know. <laughs> Poor people on the East Coast. Um, so, so this is great. So that's Gary's view, and you can see... Uh, is this, like, from some surveillance camera, Gary? This is on the corner of this end of the roof of my room. So I am down in this, under this area right here, and then here's my telescope. Yeah. And here's the dome that's pulled off. And then they the show in the video, the video that Google did about us, uh, they show you pulling that, your roof apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right by the pool there. But they didn't show the part of you falling through your roof. That's a completely different one. All right. Um, I don't I'm know. sorry. I, I'm sorry. I missed that. What did you say? Oh, something about you just falling through the ceiling. What? What? Your house. Huh? What? Yeah. What? I don't know. What? So hold on. I, I, I was, I was helping up. you, and then I see a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're breaking up. Don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea either. It was, Thanks it for I just I just <laughs> muted them. Um, <laughs> so, there you go, Fraser. That's the thank best thing. you. Thank you. That's oh, great. Wow. Bitty that would be one twelfth of a second on hydrogen alpha, and then zoomed in. Nice. Oh, Still. So hmm. You can see the rings. Yeah, we can see the rings. Yep. But it's definitely not the right setup for getting Saturn. I can see why no. you're reticent to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Your your eye can do better, and that that says something. <laughs> so for all the people who are watching this now and all the people who plan to watch this in the future, I want to just remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm not sure where you click, but uh, because then you'll get um, the reminders and you'll get notifications when things happen. We're, it's very difficult for us to be able to kind of notify people when these things are happening and try to remind you that this is all happening, especially with the kind of funny hours. And so if you subscribe to the you know to my YouTube channel, then you'll get another reminder that it's that it's happening. So, right, and we're working on some different ways of making sure everyone knows about what's going yeah. on. But the the best way is to subscribe to uh, Fraser's YouTube right now. We do yeah. have on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is the underscore VSP, yeah. and we also now have a Facebook page as well. So. Whatever that is. Going all over the interwebs. Yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. I use Hootsuite for everything. And else. and they've made a ton of changes the way events work. A lot of people were asking, like, how come we don't get invitations anymore? We're not able to do it. We, we don't know. We're working on it. Yeah. We're just oh, like, did it they doesn't just work change that, that way anymore. No, they haven't yeah. just changed it. It's been for a while. Yeah. Oh, uh, because I've been using it from the other pages just fine. Yeah. Uh, it's a is certain it number. number you... of. Oh, okay, you must have hit the number. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's a certain number, and so we're trying to figure that out as well. But I'll, we're gonna sure. sort of try and help. It's been flaky, but I can usually get it to go. So. Yeah. 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 Hey, Scott. Um, all right. Look hey, over well, in the comments. We have. Hmm? Which one? With. Did it's, yeah, I have so many comments up. <laughs> oh. We have we have a beautiful comment from Craft Lass, uh, who says, oh. "Don't most of us love the night sky because we don't sleep when it's visible?" So <laughs> yes, the the insomnia crowd. <laughs> Actually, I should have said I should have said the group chat in the uh, hangout oh, here. Group chat. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. That's my comment. <laughs> nice. Thank That's you. That's a good idea. So um, Roy here apparently is. Try it. Has, I just did. Oh, I clicked on really? it. Um, if yeah. you all as well go to virtualstarparty.org, we'll bring you to. All right, Google Roy, I, will, I expect a call from my lawyers. Um, <laughs> I've had that for awesome. about a year, by the way. Oh yeah, did you? Okay, all right. I'll, I will. Uh, I will. We'll set something up on there then. That sounds yeah. good. Um, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to run through sort of. There's a few last images, or maybe there isn't. There's one here. I think. And Andrew has switched to the screen share. I can see. Oh yeah. yeah, I think that looks a little better, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, I've got uh, M10 here too. Got stuck. I can't see it. That's M10. Great. <laughs> there we go. M10, and actually, I will switch now to a um, and maybe somebody can tell me what the adjacent one is. This is actually the same object here, M10, with the camera. That's on top of the scopes, and there's another cluster. Which, I'm not sure which one that is nearby. I I really like this view. Yeah. You can take pictures with this one too. Please share them. This is neat. Yeah. It kind of gives you a little context. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really like that. Okay, well, why don't we wrap yeah, things up in about an hour? Sorry, M12, to, okay. Sorry to everybody who uh, sort of stuck through us with that half hour as we tried to get everything working. I really, really apologize. Um, so, technology, what are you going to do? Yeah, we tried. Uh, your <laughs> refund's in the mail. Um, all right, well, thank you, everybody, for joining us and watching us tonight. Thank you so much, Andrew, for getting up so early in the morning for you in the UK. Bill, thank you, uh, thank you again for... Uh, for toughing through a couple of times trying to get into this hangout. Really appreciate it. And yeah, I mean, somebody's going to have to educate me on uh, on how to get into the hangouts. I, oh, wow. I, they've changed it since the last time. I I'll work with you, Bill. We're, we're still was, figuring yeah. it out, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know it's been, it's been rough. Um, so it's not, it's not you, technically. You should have got a nice invite that was jumping at you and made sure you knew that you could come in. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Gary, thanks, as always. Thank it's you. Wonderful to have you here. Really appreciate it. And, and Roy, you'll be getting a letter bomb from me. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, congratulations on your fancy hat and all of the education that uh, goes along with it. That's that's marvelous. We're so proud of you. I have a tassel. I have yeah. a tassel. Do you get your soul back with the hat? <laughs> no, no. Of course not. Grad no. school is completely decimated. <laughs> <laughs> that mean, hat is holding your brain doing. together now, isn't it? It is. It is. It really is. Yeah. And Roy, congratulations on that new telescope. That 10-inch is yeah. is terrific. Um, you know, work the, work on the focus. It. Yep, I gotta, I gotta. The, the I'm focus is a hard time. Right. I'm sorry. I found something, and I'm just gonna give you a hard time about. And I'm, I, I apologize in advance for the endless ribbon. And it's not in color. What? What's it's not in color. color. Could yeah. you put a color camera on that one, please? <laughs> No, but I could do the three filters. Could you put it in space? <laughs> it uh, in space? That's, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll trade you the, uh, the, the domain, and we'll just say, all right, we'll let you keep the domain if you put it in space, and there'll be no lawyer. Oh, okay. Going on. okay. Would you like the .org, the .net, or the .com? That's who's been squatting on it. It's all you. Them. You've been yeah. squatting on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk after, Gary. <laughs> We'll talk after Roy, and I'll we'll, I'll set this up and and transfer to my host and stuff. So yeah, that's awesome, okay. man. Thanks. Uh, and Scott, thanks yeah. as always. And uh, give us an update on the contest, and we'll sort of we'll post the results on uh, Universe Today and and sort of all in the Google Pluses. So I'll be going through yeah all week. I, you know, because I do other things than the virtual star party. But uh, what? I know, right? It's crazy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, most likely by next week's episode, I will have everything set okay. up. I'll be working on some images, and we'll, I'll write something up for you. Sure, that'd be great. All right, man. We'll see you guys all later. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>